This week on Crosby. England legalizes blasphemy. Is the Church of England no longer the Church of England? Jesus is watching you steal that beer. Sexual healing? Not quite. And Jesus at the Porn Expo. Welcome, everybody. I'm Dr. Jim Butler, service pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts. And I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. And uh, I'm ready this week. (laughs) Got my Packers shirt on. You know, it's funny. We, We talk about football. You'd think that we're like major sports um, nuts or something like that. But the Packers are the only um, sports that I follow, period. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm actually a bigger baseball fan. And, um, yeah. and uh, I really like um, what follow. Well, I used to, I still enjoy following Kansas City, but they haven't much to follow lately. So uh, being up here in Red Sox Nation, I have kind of adopted the, the Sox as a secondary team. And Although I'll never be able to afford to go to Fenway. Um, that's yeah. just never going to happen. So, but um, <clears throat> yes, we um, yeah. Well, yeah uh, actually, football. I, I've gotten to like it more than I used to. I used to consider football to combine the two worst things about American society: violence punctuated <laughs> by committee meetings. <laughs> See, now, I read uh, Reggie White's um, autobiography, and um, he said that football is not a violent sport. It's an aggressive sport. Ah. Okay. So you need to understand the difference. I, You're not trying to actually hurt anybody. I, I, I need to mention, by the way, that line was stolen from George Will, in case anybody's out there calling plagiarism. Yes, uh, that, that, that was oh, okay. from George Will. Who, of course, if you ever read his columns, is very famous for quoting everybody, so he's got to get quoted occasionally. <laughs> but, but you know, you know, there's a um, story that George Will, because he's a big baseball fan, tells about Babe Ruth, and uh, Babe Ruth struck out, and this guy, um, and Babe Ruth goes over to the Empire and yells at him, you know, there's 30,000 people in those fans who can tell you that's, that, that was a ball. And the Empire looks at him and goes, Yep. My mind's the only opinion that counts. <laughs> he kept his eye on the ball. Jesus keeps his eye on the beer. Ah, there we go. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> I was getting very mental. I was wondering where you're going with that. Yeah. <laughs> this is in the Salt Lake City or the Salt Lake Tribune. This is a um, weird story. <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. Uh, this is like a stupid criminal story. <laughs> All right. Two guys walk into a convenience store. It, it's, it sounds like a joke. Yeah, um, yeah that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, a rabbi and a pastor walk in it. No. Um, <laughs> so they, uh, they go in there and they want some beer. And uh, the clerk says, oh, no, it's it's after, was it 1, a, 1 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah, after 1 a.m. And you can't sell beer after 1 a.m. And uh, so they said, well, can we steal the beer? <laughs> and, then, and so the clerk says, yes, but Jesus is watching. <laughs> so they uh, showed a pistol, took the beer, and left nine bucks on the counter. <laughs> There. You think we could bribe Jesus on this one? I don't know. I thought this was kind of strange. <laughs> I think they had enough beer already. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. So, yeah. I, I don't even know where to go with that one. Uh, but apparently <laughs> they didn't stop them. You know, apparently the guy let them walk off. It doesn't say, you know, that they were ever arrested or anything. Uh, yeah. But the only thing that they did illegal was, uh, you know, buy the beer after uh, 1 a.m. Our commandments clearly state that beer is all right. 
So, I don't know if it was a, um, did, did, did they, you know, prohibit beer on sales on Sunday out there, or just you can't buy it after 1 a.m., or what, are, what the deal is? Well, in Madison, you can't buy beer after, like, 10. Because um, when we're passing through there sometimes, on the way to between our family who live in Madison and um, and here in Iowa, a lot of times we'll stop at a grocery store to pick up some munchies or something, and they'll actually have a gate block, like locking off the beer aisle. Mm-hmm. And um, and so yeah, that that's like ten. And you jump the gate, <laughs> dude. I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa jumps the gate. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, the. Uh... Uh, just to, 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 now up here, it used to be that beer, uh, liquor sales were illegal on Sunday. Uh, but then they made it, it was okay between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and now it's just okay all year round. Um, I don't know what time the, 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 the liquor stores close around here. I think, I think it's like, I, I think it's like, it might be about 2 a.m., I'm not sure. So this reminds me of when I was in college, I was a manager at a Wendy's. We got bought out, and the new management decided that um, instead of closing at, like, midnight or 1, they wanted to be open until 2. Well, 1 o'clock was bar time, and this was right on State Street in Madison. This was right downtown. And uh, and I said, now, hold on a minute. I'm one of the closing managers, and I don't want to have to work and have all these drunks coming in. Oh, the bar's closed, so let's go to Wendy's, you know. And I said, I want that, you know, forget it. That It's not worth it. They're going to end up busting up the place or whatever. It's, not, it's You know, it's not worth the hassle. And uh, I said, well, yeah, they'll come in hungry. <laughs> like, that's fine. You work that shift. I stepped down and, and went back to being a regular crew person. I didn't want to be out that late on a school night anyway. So. Well, I was wondering if the, uh, you know, if it dawned on them that, you know, once that happened, they wouldn't want to be open any later, any longer. Yeah, I, I think you're yeah. probably right. A bunch of drunk guys walking in there. Nope, not what you want mm-hmm. to do. Yeah, I mean, we had a big enough problem with the drug dealers in there. So, I, <laughs> it was an interesting place to work, you know. <laughs> one of the guys goes to the bathroom one time, and he comes back. I said, that was fast. He says, yeah, well, I walked in, and... These guys were right in the middle of a cocaine deal. One of them turns around, pulls a knife on me, and says, "You didn't see anything." <laughs> says, "So as soon as they leave, I gotta go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be mm, okay. okay. <laughs> so I didn't see anything either. <laughs> I bet you didn't. But they didn't come and you know try to order beer, but we didn't serve beer anyway. But, you know, it's stories like this. This is why you can't sell beer after a certain time. Because if you're still out drinking at that time of night, you've probably had enough. <laughs> Just like yeah, these guys. <laughs> I'll tell you, after last week, man, people are going to think all kinds of things about me, Jim. <laughs> that up. Probably nothing that I don't think already, so... Um, <laughs> okay. Well, at least... I, uh, oh, go ahead, you're doing go this, this time. Okay, I said at least I don't um, come up with uh, magic baths to um, heal my people in my congregation. I was about to say, you know, you have laws against drinking. Did you guys also have laws against blasphemy? That was that was the direction I was going to go. Either way. Either way. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 jump yeah. over to England first. All right, sounds good. Um, which I don't know. It's kind of funny. Um, they're par- I didn't know they had this law in England. Um, they um, uh, apparently there's a they have blasphemy laws. And it is illegal to, um, um, you know, blaspheme against God. Uh, and some people want to um, do away with them. Apparently somebody, he's only referred to as, uh, oh, uh, 
liberal Democrat. I don't know what the MP stands for. Member of Parliament. Member of Parliament. Okay. Evan Harris. Um, he calls them ancient, discriminatory, and illiberal. <laughs> I've never heard illiberal before. So. But okay. I, I like the, um, the, this comment here. The Almighty does not really need the protection of these ridiculous laws, and that's why large numbers of people of a religious perspective share their view that these offenses need to be abolished. <laughs> Well, I have to agree with that. Um, yeah, uh, I think, me too. I think it's a little bit archaic, um, but I think it's kind of... But yeah, they wanted to consult with the Church of England to see what they think. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Archbishop Rowan would say they were just legends, so no, no, we're not worried about it anyway. <laughs> see, that's part of the episode that got chopped off, so all of our listeners right now are going, hmm? That's right. <laughs> How did we redo that episode? We redid that episode. Did we? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we redid that episode. We did a take two. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. That's that's fun. So, okay. anyhow, yeah, so the good archbishop is, you know, uh, wherever he is. Um, you know, the reality is, and I think this is guy is, is right, um, uh, the director of uh, BBC, who said, what we have now is essentially a secular country based on a common bond of decency, which includes free speech. Um, and this comes, you know, the question just a minute of, of, you know, decoupling the Church of England as the official state church. Um, you know, written as far as I can tell. And, uh, I don't know, maybe Rhonda, because again, she struck me as being British from her, her note that she sent us. Um, can, 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 can concur. Britain, as far as I can tell, is a very, very secular country. Yeah. Well, given that um, the Prince Charles said that when he was coronated or whatever, that he didn't want to be called defender of the faith, he wanted to be called defender of the faiths, plural. So, yeah, you don't get much more secular than that. Because that's, in other words, anything. I think, well, okay, I'd say Henry VIII would be rolling over his grave since he was the one who was the defender of the faith, but... <laughs> which was a, a title given to him by the Pope for because he denounced Luther. I'm not sure how it worked out later on with the Pope, you know, when he broke off, but, you know, he considered himself a faithful Catholic to the end of his days. Just an adulterous man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, now, the reason that this whole issue of this blasphemy law came up is because uh, a Christian evangelical group tried to prosecute the director general of the BBC for blasphemy over the screening of the musical Jerry Springer, the Opera. So this is sort of the equivalent of you take it to the Supreme Court and, and say, all right, it's time to throw this law out. You so. know... I don't know about the blasphemy laws. There may be laws about rotting people's brain cells or something. I mean, that might be a As long as it's before 1 o'clock. <laughs> okay, that's the, Or after 1 o'clock, something like that. But anyhow, you know. It's, <laughs> I don't remember anymore. <laughs> what is in that mug? <laughs> it's chai latte tea. Lots of chai or something like that. I have your <laughs> basic everyday Lipton over here, so decaf. I don't even know if there's caffeine in that one. Oh, okay. There's something in that one. Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway uh, but they, you know, it's, it's, on the other hand, maybe we do need to be a little bit sensitive to the idea of blasphemy. I mean, you ever notice, I mean, how God's name is just mistreated? There just seems to be a very casualness about vulgarity in society. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've probably said this on the show before, but I remember the first time that I ever heard the word damn used on TV, like on network television. I was watching Star Trek, the motionless picture, and uh, and I heard that, and and 
I, I was just a little kid and I, and I turned to my dad. <laughs> Can they say that? <laughs> he just kind of went, hmm? <laughs> I, uh, I was, it was in the mid, or it was in the late 70s. Um, I think the first show I ever did was the, what's the name of that show? It was the... Concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. I can't remember the name of it. it. It was about a group of students learning at Harvard, in Harvard Law School. And uh, I can't remember who starred in it offhand. There's this... It was based on a on a movie. I just remember the guy coming in and saying, "You come in with minds filled with mush, and you will leave thinking like lawyers." And he was, I can't remember his name. He was just a great, you know, built the screen Shakespearean actor. But yeah, I was on that show though on the first time, and uh, you know, still something that kind of upsets me. You know, I, I think even more than that is the constant, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, that you hear all the time. I mean, it's to the point where when you hear someone say, gosh, you go, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know... You have, you, have, you, have, you have young teenage daughters, so, you know, with their friends is probably even worse. You know, it's not too bad. Um... And in fact, there's, uh, there's a couple kids in confirmation class that um, have kind of struggled with it. They they didn't grow up in the church and stuff. And um, yeah, th- although they've they still kind of go, what's the big deal, you know? But um, they they've gotten a lot better about it. They're learning. But. Yeah, there's something to be said for showing some respect for God, you know. And as Christians especially, you know, we look at that and say, you know, we, we want to hold God's name very highly um, because it's the name into which we're baptized, it's the name by which we're saved. And um, so, you know, here's here's this guy that that created us, that saved us, that, that went through all this this pain and torture to give us eternal life. It seems worthwhile to, you know, show him some respect. That sounds like a crazy idea, but I think it just might work. The name of the TV show <laughs> I was thinking of is The Paper Chase, and John Houseman was the main actor playing Professor Kingsfield, Charles Kingsfield. That was the name of the show I was thinking of, so hard. So hard. Um, you know, it's... Paul in Ephesians says that, you know, no obscenity or coarse talk should come out of your mouth, but only that thing which is fitting for building up the, the church. So I think it's very important for us as Christians really to watch our language. When I was in, um, uh, just finished college, I was working in a factory where we made uh, ice cream cartons and stuff. And the uh, one of the guys comes up to me one time and says, Jim, I got a question for you. Why don't I ever hear you cuss? He says, uh, you know, I, people do it around here all the time. He says, I never hear you do it. And I thought it was always interesting that he noticed what I didn't say. Yeah. And it was a very... Well, you know what? It sends a powerful message. Was an idea. That was the stuff there. So, but let's go on with this. The twin story, staying over there in Britain. Um, yeah. This is kind of interesting um, because um, apparently there was a motion calling for the Church of England to be as disestablished, which mean, mean it be no longer be the state church. And it was motion number 666. <laughs> it's, the, um, it's the bill of the beast. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so it this is just this weird thing that they uh it was tabled oh this this motion was tabled while they were debating that blasphemy law yeah so these these two kind of things happen at the same time but, so I'm, I'm thinking, okay, is this coincidence or did somebody plan this just because they thought it'd be funny? I, I, well, 
they're all saying it's a coincidence, so I don't know how you'd plan it. But um, yeah, it ended the call to a formal link between the church and state in England and uh, embodied in the monarch Queen Elizabeth, who's both the head of the state and the head of the Church of England. Um, well, I confess, I'm American. I don't like state churches. Um, Not real big on monarchies either. <laughs> monarchy doesn't bother me. But I, I think in wherever there's a state church, it almost always leads to a meaningless faith. Uh, I mean, you look at two of the, the, you know, a lot of the nations in Europe that have state churches. Yeah. Uh, Sweden. You know, it's, it's meaningless. Uh, Germany, basically, it's meaningless. Uh, and yep. England, too, is a very secular culture. Uh, you know, and there's no, I mean, I don't want to be real insulting, but there's also just no real desire, I think, for the pastors to do much of anything because you're paid for by the state. You know, there's no stewardship for the people because it's paid by the state, pays for everything. So I think a lot of things that, you know, are, are important in our faith, there's just no reason to go through with it. Yeah. Yeah. And you compare that to a country where Christians are persecuted, like China, for instance. You know, um, China used to, we had, used to have, actually have a lot of listeners and viewers to our show in China until they blocked us. And, um, I mean, over there, there, people are, they're going and hiding in the woods to have their church services because the so-called Christian church in China is not even Christian. I so, mentioned that but there, a couple of weeks ago, by the way. I can't remember what yeah. the context was, but yeah, that I, 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 my podcast has been banned in China. Uh, and I'll, but, but, but. They don't want me there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Mark Man in China. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Either that or somebody there has good taste, you know. <laughs> that very well could be, too. But, you know, it's really kind of a scary thing to read. To, uh, I, I mean, you look at it. The other thing is, if you're a pastor then in, in the state church, then you have to accept whatever the state happens to be teaching. And that yeah. creates oh, yeah. a great, great deal of problems. Uh, because... Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you, the state may not accept you because you're too critical. It could be too orthodox or too heterodox for that matter. But that's, you know, in, in Sweden. Uh, now, it's no longer a state church, but it effectively was. But one of the rules there is that, you know, if you don't think women should be ordained, you cannot be um, uh, ordained in, that church, in, in the Church of Sweden any longer. They just... Won't even won't even consider you. We're in trouble. Yep. Although, no. How different is that though from say, um, if you, well, um, if you want to be an ELCA pastor, that's not a state church, even though it has America in the name. Um, but can you be an ELCA pastor and be? I suppose you can because they. Pretty much anything goes. Well, you there you'd have to get through the candidacy committee. Each, unlike us, where the, the seminaries kind of sign off that you're you're okay and orthodox. Uh, there they have uh, committees in each synod, and they kind of track your progress through seminary. And they have to kind of sign off on you. And uh, I've knew now. I know one guy. He said they told him politely, you know, if you could, can you be, you know, say that women should not be ordained. No, we would not, you know, accept you into. Well, he wanted to perform in the Missouri Senate. Yeah. But the problem is, is that the state, what happened in the, the state church of, uh, the, the, the church of Sweden, though, is when they voted to ordain women, is they said, well, we will always allow for those who do not want to have this, uh, to mm -hmm. remain pastors. We're not going to force this on anybody. And it's interesting that, of course, there's the great Swedish theologian, Boo Yerts, uh, author of, um, Hammer of God. Probably, you know, he could not be ordained today in the body in which he was a, a very famous bishop. <laughs> yeah, so that's saying something. Yeah, it's kind of an odd thing there. Um, so, you know, I've always got a problem with state churches. I just don't think overall that they're good ideas. Uh, 
especially when you think, you know, kind of the rule is who, whatever the theology of the ruler is, it winds up being the theology of the people. Mm-hmm. And that's definitely true, of course, with, you know, with, uh, of the Church of England, as they bounced back and forth uh, between, you know, very Catholic theologians and very, I mean, very Catholic kings and more Reformed kings. And then, of course, came to finally then the, the, the Via Media, the, very, the broad way, the middle way. And you can see all kinds of different thought, theologies in the Church of England. And they coexist. Mm-hmm. But you have to, because that's the nature of state church. Okay, you may have noticed a slight bump there, folks. Uh, we're sorry about that. We had a um, bit of um, connect- connection problems. But uh, I think we're both yep. against uh, state churches <laughs> and both in favor of other things. Dale, pick it up from there, buddy. Yeah. So this is... Uh... When I was in Green Bay, or actually on this past Sunday, we were talking about what does this G mean? And, uh, <laughs> pretty sure it stands for God. <laughs> oh, very nice, Brian. So, well, you know what? Because, uh, you know, in Green Bay it does anyway. And you know what they say in Dallas? Why is there a hole in the middle of their dome so that God can watch his team? So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's why there's a hole in the top of the prison there. Well, we we we, we have Randy Moss up here, so we really can't speak right now. So um, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> um, so let's talk. Speaking about, of prison, yeah, or you know, whatever. Let, let's talk about your uh, magic uh, baths here. Disgusting. All right. Um, this is this is kind of normally we don't do like clergy sex scandal um, stuff, but this one was kind of weird. Um, we have a pastor who is convicted of sexually assaulting a parishioner to whom he gave healing baths and naked rub downs to rid her of evil spirits. This sounds more like a witch doctor than a pastor to me. Oh, got me. It's fact he had nine other children ages 8 to 22 by four other women. <laughs> Whom he supports on an income. Yeah. Did you get this? $19,600 a month. This guy's making a good chunk of change for his salary, apparently. I just saw that. I go, what? You know, I mean, you know, shoot, you're doing, you know, if you got that, you know, you know, one third of that. I, 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 yeah, have you got you know, you know, three months of his salary for the year? Some pastors are doing good. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a reality. It's a sad. Thing. So uh, this is uh, my my question here is why is this guy a pastor? I mean, it was that First Timothy says a pastor must be above reproach, right? This guy is about as reproachable as you can get. Well, he, he's not, it's, it's not Christian. This is, this, we talk about the term syncretism. We've used that term a few times. You talk about, you know, mixing together different religions. Right here. I mean, the guy says, in dramatic testimony lasting mm-hmm. five days, the victim said he gave her black magic baths. He admits it's black magic. For which he charged a hundred and fifty bucks to rid her of evil spirits. Assume the position. Yeah, man, I'll tell you, I rid people of evil spirits. It's true, you know, baptism, only one necessary, and um, I do it for free. <laughs> yeah, it's just incredible. Um, and, and yeah, she said, you know, this started when she was 17. And I said her mother brought her this guy when she was 17 because of vomiting and headaches, and... Um, it's a sad story. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this this guy should be locked up, throw away the key, um, remove whatever. I don't. It, it sounds like this is kind of he, he's running his own shop, you know. So. Um, <clears throat> This is 
somebody ought to defrock him. Yeah, I mean, not, what's his congregation doing? Revival I mean, <laughs> they're allowing this to continue, and they're not doing anything about it. Right. Yeah, it was the Mount Zion Revival Church of the Apostles, and he ran it out of a basement in his home. So, you, you know what he reminds me of? There's that guy in the in in, in Acts, um, Simon Magus, who claimed to be Christian. Um, Simon Magus. Yeah. No, no, he didn't claim to be Christian. He, he was he was Jewish. And he was there on Cyprus, and, and Paul made him go blind for, you know, his his, his witchcraft and denouncing the Holy Spirit. That, that's what this guy reminded me of. Well, yeah, he was, um, that, that's where we get the word simony from. It's the idea of uh, making money off of the church. So what, what this guy was doing was uh, he was... He, he actually he wanted to buy the Holy Spirit so that he could perform miracles and make money off of it. Right, right. Oh, I know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of Bar Jesus, uh, who's on Cyprus when Paul was doing his uh, first missionary journey there. Um, but Simon yeah. Magus would work too. Yeah, the guy Simon. Here, here, here we see Simony, you know, trying to buy, uh, um, you know, people, uh, people paying him for for, for spiritual stuff. It's a it's a horrible thing. Um, I don't know if they make pits of hell deep enough for people like him. Yeah. You know, like I, I think I've mentioned it before. The one passage in Rome it always scares me. You know, my name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what was so funny? That was there's a delay again. Although it's it's fixed now. Okay. So if people were watching this, you could probably back up. Because what happens, just a little side note, a little, little tech note, this stuff is coming through, the, the data is coming through in these packets. And um, sometimes they get bottlenecked, and then all of a sudden there will be this burst and it will all come through. Which is what happened here, how all of a sudden, you know, there's this delay, and then all of a sudden it caught up. So, yeah, that's what happened there. I'm glad we're back on, though. I am, too. Uh, last one, then. This one I thought was kind of a, a po- Let's. I think this is kind of ending on a positive note. Yeah, well, it really is. It doesn't sound like it, but it it is, absolutely. Um, go ahead and explain it, because my daughter's in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Two former... I love this term, sex workers. Um, I didn't know there was such things as a sex industry. I just, I just think that's great. Um, and yeah, they're going to attend um, the uh, Adult Entertainment Expo at Las Vegas. Um, Heather, I get you pronounce the name, Veitch. Um, yeah. Founder of Jesus Christ Girls and Annie Lobert, founders of Cookers for Jesus, uh, are going to hand out cards and testify about their faith. They, they both got involved in doing adult movies. They both involved in drugs. They both involved in all kinds of things. Um, but now they uh, go out and, and basically advertise for God. Well, she says, I, I, I use my body to advertise for God. You know, and so she still resembles the girl she's trying to reach for Christ. You know, I I went to their website, which is where I got this graphic from, and um, just to first of all, I, I had to Google them to find their um, their address, and um, they when I googled them, I saw that there's a whole bunch of you know discussion about this organization, and people are really negative about it, you know, because basically it sounds like they're they're seeing the name, and they're not actually looking to see what it is, you know, these are people that got out of the industry. These are people that, you know, that were stuck in it and were, I mean, you should read her story. You go to, um, it's, uh, it's dot net and, um, they, you, you read her testimony. It's long. I didn't read the whole thing cause it was too long and I didn't have time, but, um, oh, she talks about how she was beaten and, and, and. Uh, just horrible things happened to her and, and how she just like kept going and trying to, trying to get control and, and all this kind of stuff. And, um, until finally she was watching Joyce Meyer of all people. And, um, she heard God loves you 
And she went, huh? And because she thought God could never love me. And then she was reading her Bible and stuff, and she realized, yeah, he forgives me, he loves me, you know, and unconditionally, and, and, and I don't have to live like this. And um, so she wants to give that message of hope to other people that are trapped in it. So right. she's not doing it anymore. No, she says she uh, reaches out to call girls at casinos um, and uh, sometimes sits in bars and shares her story and invites them to go to church with her. Uh, I think it's such a neat idea. But again, you know, what we are dealing with, 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 with women who have been completely debased. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been, um, we're doing Sixth Commandment in, in confirmation, and next week, uh, one of the issues I'm, I'm going to talk about is pornography. And that, you know, one of the real evils of it is that it debases women. You know, it's not something yeah. that's, that's, um, people want to say it's like a uh, victimless crime. It's not. No. Oh, you get a chance sometime, watch the um, James Dobson interview with Ted Bundy. You know, this is a guy for any of who are maybe too young to have heard of him or something like that. Uh, look him up on Wikipedia or something. Um, in fact, you could probably look on YouTube for this interview. But, um, you know, he talks about how, you know, he started looking at this stuff and that's where he got started, and and it was just it's it's like a drug that it's got a, you need more and more and more. It's an addiction, and you, and so you keep looking for more extreme, and uh, and to the point where I mean he started killing and 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 it just got horrible, which I mean it was horrible to begin with, and so but yeah it, it was interesting reading her stuff she said you know people think that the women that are in this industry enjoy it they don't not at all it's all it's it's a mask that they put on because it's part of business but they hate it and they might like it at first because they think they can control it and and everything but um over time, they you know they they feel horrible about it, and um and they they feel like they can't be loved, and um and and that there's there's nothing good about them and and stuff like that, and uh, they they keep looking for acceptance and and love, and they never find it. Or many are many are drug addicted, and um, yep yep, and, uh, and she tried everything. And again, I mean, part of the addiction there is to help deal with the pain. You know, mm-hmm. you don't look at, you know, you can get away. One said, you know, that way she didn't have to worry, you know, she was debasing herself and at least make the pain go away while she was doing it. So, uh, the other neat group in this thing that you talked about is triplexchurch.com. Ch- mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I heard about them first, um, about five or six years ago. And they're, they're, they're part of the emerging church. Uh, you go to, I, I, Actually, they're, they're, I think it's part of a Baptist church. Uh, and they're really pushing this whole issue of pornography and how really deadly it is in people's lives. Um, used to be, of course, basically a, 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 an issue for men to deal with. But with the birth of the Internet, it's become a real issue for women. Oh, it's so easy. It's so you don't even have to go looking for it. It comes to find you. That's right. Well, it's even easy. I mean, but now, um, <clears throat> thanks to uh, the uh, porn version of YouTube out there, uh, it's it, you know it's completely free as well. And I haven't looked for that. <laughs> I don't know where I read about it. I you know was reading something. Oh, it was a it was, yeah. It was, I can't remember where I was reading about it. Uh, it was something. I think it was a National Review, a column, and it was talking about you porn. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, the, the other thing that's doing though, of course, is all these guys who are making money are mad because. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, it's anyway, all free now. Um, Triple X Church does a, 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 a lot of stuff, uh, go to a lot of these places and, and, and share the gospel. They, uh, go to a lot of churches and talk about the evils. They also, um, do some online support. Uh, if you're somebody who's 
struggling with this area, they will help put you in touch with a counselor in your area who can help you. They have a neat little program on there called, um, that's a free download for Windows or Mac, called um, X3 Watch. And uh, basically, if it, it, it just sits in the background and it monitors the website you go to, and if there's anything that's questionable, it will send um, a listing of those websites to uh, accountability people. Yeah, like your spouse or um, your pastor or, uh, um, you know, a close friend that it's, you know, it, this is the kind of thing that it's a voluntary um, thing that, that you set up, but it's, it's, it's so people can keep each other accountable. Right. And what's interesting about it, too, is if you disable it, it tells the other, it tells the other party this has been disabled. And if you remove it, it tells them, sends a note to them, and it's been removed. Um, so it it's really is a neat program. If you look at a lot of the guys who've been caught up in sin, Ted Haggard, uh, some of these other guys, it'd be amazing, interesting to find out how many of them had pornography, either in their background or was something that they were doing at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the one sin that the Bible does not tell us to stand up to. You know, we're supposed to take a stand against sin and, and, and fight against sin and all that kind of thing. This particular commandment is the one where God just tells us, flee from it. Just run away. Because you, you try to stand up to this one, not going to happen. You know, it's like a, um, a couple that aren't married. You know, um, as, as far as setting in, in your relationship, as soon as, um, you relate, you get very far at all into a relationship, um, Probably nowadays, it's first or second date. Um, as soon as you figure out that, that, that this is going to go more than one date, um, or, or or even a long day, you need to talk about it. You say, all right, what are our boundaries? And when we're going to set this, we're going to hold each other accountable, and we're going to avoid any kind of situation uh, where we would be put into a, a temptation. Because, you know, it's just it's easy to fall into temptation. <laughs> What? Okay, folks. Remember those packets Dale was talking about? They were just saw them. <laughs> you were breaking oh. up and going very slow. I think you sped it up real quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so, so it, but you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, um, people will say, okay, if, if, you know, we're going to live together to cheapen the rent, um, but, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to sleep together. All right. You know what? It's still sin. Because, number one, you're putting yourself in a position of horrible temptation. And, um, and number two, you're, what kind of message are you sending? You know, we talked when we were talking about language. And, and what kind of message are you sending to the world? And it's the same thing. You could tell people that you're not, and you might not be. <laughs> but you think anybody's going to believe it? Hmm. I have a, a, a friend of mine who went to a secular university, and his girlfriend was up in his room one night, one, two in the morning. I don't know. what, And they fell asleep. You know, she just, you know, she fell asleep, and he fell asleep, and, you know, that was... Nothing happened other than they, you know, just were all tired and they both just fell asleep. And, um, but then the next morning, um, you know, there she is leaving his room at, you know, nine, you know, nine in the morning. Mm -hmm. And he just like, you know, what, you know, how that tore apart their witness. You know, they didn't do anything by trying to convince everybody and tell people nothing. Didn't do anything, you know. She would have left last night, she, you know, but we just both fell asleep watching this movie. Well, it's, it's like that's the old song, um, Wake Up Little Susie. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I love that song because you think about that song today, people would be like, what? You know, here it was four in the morning. And, uh, you know, what are we going to tell your mom? What are we going to tell our friends? You know, our repu, our, uh, uh, how's it go? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so nowadays it'd be like, it, it wouldn't be a big deal. So, um, 
I'm, you that know, song was banned I long for those days. <laughs> and I long for those days as well. Well, we're, we're kind of disappointed. We didn't get any good feedback this week. We didn't get any notes from anybody after kind of hitting the jackpot last week with three of them. So, although yeah. Dale did have one comment from, um... Message for you, son. What was that comment from? Somebody rated us a two. Oh, yeah. This is, um... All right, well, a little background first. I, I found a new service that enables us to very easily post our videos to uh, a bunch of different serv- uh, web uh, video sites all at the same time. And by the way, if any of you out there are uh, are video podcasters like us, um, it's called Tube Mogul, T-U-B-E-M-O-G-U-L dot com. And you just, you can upload your video there and then it'll send it to, um, we're on YouTube, Yahoo, MySpace, uh, Google and Blip TV. And I submitted it to Meta Cafe, but they, um, rejected it because they said there was a copyright violation. Which is either the, when we show the web pages in the background, although that should be considered fair use, um, or else the little sound clips, you know, that we put in there. Um, that one is probably a little less, uh, copyright okay. But, um, anyway, so I was, I was at, um, oh, oh, the other one that we're at is, uh, Rever, R-E-V-E, or R-E-V-V-E-R. And while I was there, I was, I was looking to see if our video had showed up yet. And so I did a search on CrossFeed. And this thing called the Clip Show shows up. What's this? And why do they have CrossFeed as one of their tags? And it turns out that one of their episodes, they did a video review of our show. Unfortunately, we got like a 2 out of 10. (laughs) Now... I wish that, that, I mean, they, they did this episode in like middle of December. And by then, our new format had been out. And so I wish that they had, they must have done these up in advance or something, or they grabbed an older episode because, uh, the, the episode that they reviewed was like three before we changed the format. And so it would have been interesting just to, to get their take. But I am of the opinion that there is no such thing as bad publicity. In fact, right now, our subscriber numbers for both the video and audio feed is at an all-time high. And uh, so if any of you out there found us through the clip show, send us a note. And uh, you can do that by... Uh, I, by the way, I forgot to do this in the last episode, I think. But if I remember, um, if you're watching this in iTunes, you can just click right now on the screen and it'll take you right to our feedback page. Or you can send us an email at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Yeah. Or you can call our voicemail line at 206-350-4749. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, we we found that we have just all kinds of, uh, just a wide variety of different kinds of people watching us. And uh, um, I, apparently people are enjoying the show if, if you're still sticking around. So, you know, we're happy to do that. And, you know, we we would probably do this if, you know, there was only two people watching because um, we just enjoy doing it. But uh, we're, I can get rid of that. <laughs> Speaking of of, uh, you know, video sites and stuff. <laughs> we're going to probably get a lot of views on this show just because of the tags that we're going <laughs> to use. <laughs> you know, <Probably>. sex sells. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered why your church was growing. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? Hey, if any of you out there found this episode because you were looking for you know, porn, you were doing a search on sex or something like that, and you found us, because those are the tags you're going to end up using on this one. Um, you know, there's forgiveness for you. You know, we confess our sin to God, and that's why he sent Jesus, to forgive that sin too. So, you know, if he can forgive that woman from um, Hookers for Jesus that is a um, that was a prostitute, 
he can forgive you too. He can, and, he can, and he does forgive us. That's the very and he does. Thing. Yeah, right, right. So, hey, a shout out real quick to our sponsor. Yep. PDAPerformance.com. They make uh, great software for the Palm operating system. And uh, so if you got a Palm, their Palm's kind of not doing as well as it used to, but um, I still like it. I still use it all the time. So um, go check them out. This conversation can serve no purpose so, anymore. And, um, Goodbye. I think, that, I think that's it. That should be it. Hey, everybody. Have a very good weekend. Enjoy Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. And uh, remember him as uh, not only a civil rights leader, but also as a preacher of the gospel. Yep. So, good night, everybody. God bless.